Hi guys, as a part of your last mile to CAT 2019 preparation, there are certain questions which we felt there was a need to go out and solve. What do I mean by that? I don't mean questions on LRDI or questions in Quant or questions in VARC. These are questions regarding the test taking strategy. So a couple of questions, you know, that continuously keep coming up are basically number one. Uh, ideally, what should be the number of attempts that I should have in the CAT paper? And if I have X number of attempts, what is that golden value of Y that I need to have in terms of accuracy in order to ensure that I scored my desired 95 or 99 percentile? The second question that comes up is, are you really serious when you come out and state that the easy, difficult and medium questions are all jumbled together? Isn't it possible that all easy questions are clubbed together? Or isn't it possible that say the first 10 questions are easier than the last 10 questions or any such trend? That is exactly what we want to pick up in today's session. What I'll do today is, as a part of our activity that we conduct every year on the day of the CAT exam, and also say 10 days post the CAT exam, we go ahead and we release, uh, you know, our expected cutoffs basis, the input that we receive from students regarding the optimistic and pessimistic number of attempts and their accuracy across sections. Then 8 to 10 days post the CAT day when the actual solution sheet or actual question paper is released and each individual knows how many questions they got correct across each section, we go ahead and validate that. Basis that what we've been able to go ahead and do is create a CAT analytics for you whereby we will be able to share what is that ideal combination of attempt is to accuracy that one should be aiming for considering you are aiming for a 99 percentile or a 95 percentile or an 85 percentile that's completely up to you depending upon what is that target score of yours and the second thing that we will try and answer is is it possible to come up with some sort of a trend regarding where are those sitters actually hiding can I analyze where will I find those easy questions which I need to spend a little time on and get my marks in order to score that coveted 99 percentile. So at the outset, let me start off with a graph which maps attempt to accuracy. So let's start off with the CAT 2019 slot 1 attempt to accuracy graph. If you have a look at this, you will see that in order to score a 99 percentile, there are different combinations that are possible. A student could have gone ahead and attempted 65 questions at an accuracy close to 83 to 85 percent or 70 questions at a lower accuracy of say 78 to 80 percent or probably even 80 questions at an accuracy closer to 70 percent. What does that mean? It means if I am attempting lesser number of questions that is not an hindrance as long as I am sure of the fact that I am you know edging towards a hundred percent accuracy. Because if you keep in mind last year, a 99 percentile was at 153. So if I ended up attempting 65 questions, then I should have ideally, you know, at 85 percent accuracy, gotten close to 54 to 55 questions correct, which is exactly what that 153 would have symbolized. So this kind of makes sense as well. Also, now if you start looking at it from the perspective of say CAT 2017, the numbers don't change which means 65 is to uh, 90 is what you probably see in a CAT 2017 paper rather than 65 to 85 because the cutoff was higher there. Similarly, in the CAT 2018 slot 2 paper, we see something which I would like to call a mirror image because there is absolutely no change. Yes, there might be a sporadic couple of people who probably at a greater attempt with slightly lesser accuracy of even say 65% have gone ahead and scored that 99% percentile sorry but otherwise if I'm looking at the whole picture there is not a lot of difference between slot 1 and slot 2 which was also clear from the fact that when it comes to the markup or when it comes to the scaling what we observed last year in CAT 2018 was probably that the difference between the two slots was about one one and a half question which is just about three to four marks which is exactly what we had observed now let's go to the second question and let's try answering that the second question that has come up regularly is, is it possible for you to tell me from a section wise perspective, which questions generally turn out to be easy, 
which questions are of a medium difficulty level and which questions are slightly tougher. Let's start off with the verbal section to answer that. Now, if you have a look at the verbal section, you will realize that the first 24 questions are actually RC questions. The next 10, as we all know, are verbal logic questions. Just have a look at the number of verbal logic questions which are difficult. They are close to about five questions in verbal logic which are categorized as difficult. What do I mean by difficult? Difficult questions are those which less than 50% of the people have gotten correct after they've attempted it. Medium questions are those which in which the number of people who've gotten it correct is between 50% and 75 and easy ones are those in which the percentage of people who've gotten it correct is above 75. So now looking at this graph suddenly you realize that in RCs there were close to 11 to 12 sitters that means 50% of your RC paper was actually a sitter. And that once again is in sync with what we continuously state that almost 50 to 60% of the questions in RCs are actually fact-based questions. And those questions generally are sitters and which is why the accuracy is high. Let's quickly move on to the DILR section or rather before the DILR section, let's actually have a look at the VARC section for slot two. In the VARC section for slot two, once again, there is nothing new that I need to state because it's exactly the same. Once again, when you go ahead and you look at the number of difficult questions, yes, the difficult questions are exactly at five and the medium questions are also at three, which means difficult plus medium is equal to eight, easy questions just two. On the flip side, when I look at the RC part, there are 12 questions which are easy, about five or six of them which are medium and just about three or four which are difficult. So in total, if there are 10 difficult questions, the number of difficult questions in RCs is probably 40%, whereas those in verbal logic is at 60%. That automatically means that you need to concentrate very heavily on RCs because that has become hygiene. Whereas verbal logic is going to be a game changer. So if the two of us are competing and both of us do equally well in RCs, verbal logic is where the entire game is going to change, wherein those medium difficulty level questions are the ones that we need to earmark and are the ones where we, that we need to get correct. Let's now move on to the second section, DILR. My personal favorite section, which is why I was so desperate to get to it so quickly. So as you look at the DILR section, once again, there are two sets in slot one, which can be earmarked as easy sets. Other than that, all the green dots, which are the easy ones, come sporadically across all sets. Other than the last set, which as you can see, all four questions are difficult. And that is also kind of earmarked by the attempt versus accuracy percentage. So, two takeaways. Number one, there are always a couple of LRDI sets which are easy. Do you have the capability of identifying them? Because if you do, Keep in mind, eight correct questions equivalent to 24 marks was close to an 86 or 87 percentile in CAT 2018. Second, do you now realize why we harp on the fact that CAT is not about solving sets? It is about solving questions within the sets. Because as is evident in this graph, there are roughly five or six sets which have close to two questions that can be qualified as easy. Do you have the ability to identify that? If you do and you turn around and state, I won't solve 16, uh, I will solve 16 questions and not solve four sets, you might be closer to a 99 percentile as compared to the other case. Let's look at slot two. And once again, you know, you, you're realizing that, you know, I'm going on repeating the exact same thing over and over again, because slot two is exactly synonymous to slot one. There is no real change. Once again, two sets qualified as easy, and then sporadically you'll find those easy questions. The number of medium questions is also almost equivalent and the number of tough questions doesn't see a lot of diversity either. So overall, if I'm looking at the LRDI section, it is those two points that we spoke about which need to be concentrated on. One, two easy sets. Second, easy questions distributed across sets. And finally, let's move to the third section, which is quant. A very, very interesting thing can be observed here. Just have a look at the last 16, 17 questions vis-a-vis -vis the first 16, 17 questions. Let's count the number of easy questions in the last 10 to 15 questions. And you'll suddenly see there are close to seven, eight easy questions in the last 12 to 14 questions. Whereas in the first 10 to 14 questions, the number of easy questions is down to about four. 
Thus, if I am mapping it, what has suddenly transpired is that the level of difficulty decreases as I move on. And yes, this is a particular scenario where we've set up a paper and people have gone ahead and attempted it in that order. But this is something that I have been observing over the last two years as well. So I always have a suggestion. Why don't you go ahead and try solving the quant paper from question 83 or 84? Start at 83, 84, move to 100. Why am I saying start at 83, 84 and not 100? Because post 100, you know, next and save, save and next, save and next, you'll keep going ahead and then you need to come back. Don't waste time there. Start at 83, 84, solve the last 17, come to the first 16, 17. That might be a good way of looking at it. Going forward, we will also try to come up with a second analytics video for you in which we will go ahead and further bifurcate the quant section. What do I mean by that? Can we actually go ahead and help you identify that out of the total questions that came in arithmetic, okay, which was close to about 12 to 14, how many of them were from THD, say close to about 4, and out of those 4, how many were easy, how many medium, how many difficult? Is it possible for us to give you some insights looking at the CAT 2018 paper that how many of the questions across each subset or each subsection are generally classified as easy, how many medium, how many difficult. So do stay tuned. We'll come back soon with part two of this video. Career launcher. Make your parents explode with joy.